that sang, you spoke a little bit about yourself. And you said in early days, you had unconscious seeking. Can you say what that meant exactly? Mm -hmm. I feel like from the moment we are born, it starts, actually. But first, we are children, so we don't have this memory so much. We, we were not occupied with our thinking mind yet. But once the separation starts around two, three years old, once the identification with body arises, this is a funny moment of our life. Before we know nothing, we don't know what we are. We really have no idea that we are the body. There is just open seeing, there is just pure experiencing, there is just life itself, without conscious knowing of it. But around two, three years old, this identity comes, because we are told that we are this. We are told by society, by parents, by, by teachers, all people we've met. And in this experience, it felt that from that moment, actually, the seeking starts. And the unconscious seeking. Seeking of, of contentment, of lack of separation, of unity. And I, I remember the moment, actually, of going to identity with the body. I, I remember it. I remember the moment when suddenly I started seeing that everyone has its own perspective and it's a mind perspective, basically. And I remember that that day I became suddenly super sad. I was very sad. I didn't know why. I had no idea why, but I became very sad because before the experiencing was without doubting, without comparing. It was just experiencing. And then suddenly I saw everyone has a different opinion, different perspective and goes through other stuff. And I was in shock. And then basically I, what I saw was that most of the people experience life through the mind, through the interpretation and takes that for reality. And I was one of them. But I felt something is not right. I didn't know why. I had no teachers. I, I have no spiritual seeking consciously. But I knew that something is weird here. That's it's 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 narrow experiencing of life. And suddenly, some kind of books were coming when I was a little bit older where I was meeting people, and with some people I felt more connected and with some less. And this is what I call this unconscious seeking. And before I've met actually teacher, or before I've met Ramana Maharshi picture, I call it unconscious seeking. Because once I've met Ramana, it somehow everything dropped. And there was not mental conviction, but complete total conviction that it shows something different. That's what I was seeking. And I was that time 18 years old, so it was quite early. But I, I didn't read about spirituality much. It was just his picture, and then I read his some pointers from the books of Paul Brunton's Search of Secret India. And when I read it, again, I knew this is it. That's for sure it. But there was no teacher to confirm it. I didn't know that those kind of teachers exist who could point to that. Later on, I, I got sick. And it was near-death experience for like six months. And after that, I was in India 
where I met Guruji, Shimoji. And it's it's not like I, I I knew what satsang was. I didn't I have no idea what it is. I by chance was in satsang and I was like, oh my god. These people who are the people who speak truth exist. I thought it was only like Buddha, Jesus or maybe some Himalayas masters. And I was in Tirvana Malaya and I saw, oh my goodness, these people exist. And straight away when I was in Satsang, something in me knew it's true, even though I didn't know English that time. I went for this meeting and something was speaking me to me differently beyond the language. That this is it, what I felt from, from the beginning, but I didn't know how, I didn't know even wh- how I know it. And after that, I learned English and I started listening to him, Cartola, and it became clear. And it was like straight, straight away remembering, coming back to, to what I really am. So this is a little bit of the story. Yeah, but the spiritual sir doesn't have to have a name spiritual. Most of the people are seeking for that, but doesn't have the spiritual name. When we look for happiness, when we look for peace, when we look for contentment, in general, when we want to be loved, loved even, this is the same base, this is the same search. This is a search for home, for the resting place in us. And we, when we don't match the pointings, when we don't match this, this teaching, we believe we can satisfy ourselves fully outside, by relationships, by money, by finding peace outside. But it always feels almost there, but never fully. It feels almost good, gives us a rest for a little while, it can give us a rest for a little while. But in my experience, it was always like a little bit of tension in everything what I achieved and everything what I was getting. I had dreams and I fulfilled, I was fulfilling my dreams. Like all of us, we fulfilled those dreams. But then I while fulfilling this dream, I realized, oh my goodness, it doesn't satisfy me 100%. And I was frustrated. Why? Nothing could give me this, this thing I felt might be possible. And only when I met Satsang, it was delivered completely. Like I would never expect it. Never ever expected that in the human form in life on this planet where duality is experienced so much, you can find a full contentment and peace with everything. And in this experience, it just took me by surprise. It wasn't like I was following to this and and walking, walking that direction. It just took me by surprise, really. And It is so amazing and so strong that that this existence wants to share it and points to it. And this is the biggest joy and the biggest fun, I would say, to point that and to see people coming to, to the same knowing of what we are really. That what we see what we perceive, what the consciousness is going through, is a shadow, it's a reflection, it's second, but what I am is permanently content, in peace. I don't know if I answered your question. Thank you.